show to search it up with Sienna with my interview with the original Mr. McFeely, David Newell. And now, without further ado, here's the interview. How do you first get connected with Mr. Rogers in the show? Oh boy, that is a long story, but I'll try to make it, I'll try to condense it. Years ago, before you were born, in 1967, I was visiting my cousin in London, London, England, and I was touring around Europe that summer. And I went to the American Express office in London. I had a telegram. There were no iPhones or computers then. You corresponded by either mail or a telegram or a long distance phone call. So I had a telegram and it was from a friend that knew Fred Rogers. And he said, Fred Rogers is going to expand Mr. Rogers' neighborhood to a national program. And I, my friend, gave me, gave Fred Rogers my name and said, in fact, I've made an appointment for you to meet Fred. <laughs> and when I came back to Pittsburgh from, from England that summer, the appointment, I can't remember exact date, but I remember going into the office where he worked and met him for an hour. Wow. And, and you know what he did? He asked me everything. We just had a conversation. He didn't ask me about what I've done or he just asked me about everything but the job. <laughs> and at the very end of the hour or nearly the hour, I guess, he said, when can you start? <laughs> when can you start the job? That's how I met him. And I was being interviewed for not only the McFeely position, but also my real job was going to be working behind the scenes, getting all the props and costumes ready. They call that a production assistant. And he said, oh, by the way, I also want you to play the, the character I'm writing into the script. And he's the delivery man. And his name will be Mr. McCurdy. That was the name of the character. Did you know that? I think I read that. You read that? Well, up to the very first show we were going to tape, on the script it said Mr. McCurdy. And at the last minute, this is how I got how the name got changed. The Sears Robux Foundation, that's, the, that's a store, an apartment store, a big store. And they were giving money to help us with the program. And they called to say, wish us well and everything. He said, but please don't call the delivery man, Mr. McCurdy, because that was the name of the president of the Sears Foundation. So Fred Rogers came in, so we have to get you a, a, another name because they want us to not use that name. And before he finished that sentence, he said, McFeely, that's your name. You're gonna be Mr. McFeely, because you know why? Uh, McFeely is his middle name. That's his real middle name, Fred McFeely Rogers. <laughs> and that's how I got involved in the program. It was through a friend who recommended me. And it happened within uh, maybe a month's time from the time I got the telegram till I came back to Pittsburgh and met Mr. Rogers. And it was that quick. So you never know, you never know where you where the day is gonna take you, do you? What was your experience like working with Fred Rogers? Oh, it was a wonderful, wonderful. I was there, well, I was with the company for 50, 50 years, and I still do Mr. McFeely at different events. Now I now we can't do it with the virus going around. The events have been canceled. But when they're over, I hope to uh, go and do more events. But it was wonderful working with him. I learned so much, not only about television and how you create a program and this the appropriate kind of program you write for younger children. I learned so much about children. But he was such a wonderful person to work with, very kind but he knew exactly what he wanted to do and he was always prepared. You know, he had a big background in children's uh, psychology. He has studied uh, languages. He studied theology. He was a minister. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't know. Uh, he, 
he he had a degree in theology and he was ordained that means he they he when he finished his studies in theology they ordained him a presbytery minister now he never had a church but he was actually ordained as a minister so he had all that background in learning about children and people and the world around him and he and music and he put all of that into mr rogers neighborhood it was a wonderful experience i learned so much wow and he was such a nice person at the same time very thoughtful kind man and um very funny he had a great sense of humor that a lot of people don't see but some of it came out in the puppets like king friday and lady elaine they were always they were funny in their own way and that was some of his personality coming out in those in those puppets i've seen some mr rogers episodes and i remember i love them but i went uh -huh. days ago and i watched some more and i was looking and it seems like mr mcfeely was always in a rush while mr, uh -huh. mr. rogers and his guests moved at a slower pace why do you think it was important to have a character like yours who was always rushing um, around in interacting with Mr. Rogers? Well, you know, when we first started out, the first couple programs we did, or the, maybe the first year of programs, Mr. McFeely was really in a hurry. I'm in a hurry, gotta can't stay, can't stay, can't stay. But in a way, it was a contrast to his easygoing, very deliberate, patient personality and mr mcfeely was always running in delivering things and then leaving but what it did i think he designed it that way over the years he said now mr mcfeely you're always in a hurry why don't you come in and sit down and we're going to have some sitting still exercises <laughs> and i sat there and and in a way it was a lesson for the children who were watching to be able to take your time and do things right and one time i came in and said now mr rogers that puzzle i brought you yesterday uh i have to take it back to the library hurry up hurry up sir he said oh mr mcfeely i can't do things when you rush me and it's again taking your time he wrote a song about i like to take my time and do things right and be able to take it slowly think about what you're doing and do it correctly and so the character of mr mcfeely was a little lesson in his earlier years but then he s became slower and slower and then mr rogers could use him for other other uh stories he wanted to tell other uh you know mr mcfeely had grandchildren i don't know if you have ever seen the sequences where the grandchildren were yeah. but there are so many pro i've been on over 700 programs so you have a lot of viewing to do yet <laughs> but it's still on by the way you're the people who watch you can also watch mr rogers neighborhood online pbs kids has a streaming app now and you can go in and get it it's free and you can watch mr rogers neighborhood on the app along with other children's programs just the pbs programs so i hope your audience takes advantage of that because they'll be able to catch up on a lot of these programs that we're talking about the other day i was watching it on i think it was the fred rogers um i think it was like the fred rogers production thing. yeah that's where I was watching it on. Oh, I know where you saw it. On our website, the, the Fred Rogers Productions, that's where you saw it, has it on the website. That's it. So you can see them there, too. I only saw, like, the first few episodes on Yes, it. you're right. They change it every several weeks. They'll put newer ones on. So the ones you just saw will probably have been changed to another set. So you, there are always new ones on there, so you can tell people they can see it there, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And how did you develop? Mr. McFeely is just such a great character. How do you develop um, your character, and how much of you is in the character? 
Oh, I think there's a lot of me. I'm always in a hurry, too, and I speak very quickly. And when I first interviewed with Mr. Rogers, that's the first thing he picked up on when he told me he wanted to play Mr. McFeely. He said, you talk so fast. And that's what Mr. McFeely does, too. And, he, and he's always in a hurry. And so what I did was I, I took that and, and, and I made him a little – elderly you know when i first did the program i was only 29 and i was playing a man who was 20 years older than i was at the time and now i've sort of grown into the part because <laughs> I'm, I'm mr mcfeely's age now but i so i sort of made him in a hurry and i and i found a costume in a costume shop and i put together a delivery man costume he's not really a postal worker he's more of a delivery man but in mr rogers neighborhood he, he delivers everything the, the mail and the packages and animals and everything mm -hmm. and so i worked on him for a while and it was a little speedy at first and as we went along fred said well, let's 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 bring down the the speed of mr mcfeely let's keep him a little lower key and that happened as the years went on so i think it's evolved too and then there was a mrs mcfeely and yeah. there were grandchildren and then we went to the mcfeely house so it, it evolved over the years we made the program, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And every day was a wonderful day. Oh, have you ever heard the expression, uh, when you're choosing a career, make sure you choose something you love because you'll never work a day in your life. Have you ever heard that, ex that expression? I don't think so. And, uh, but that's what I feel. You know, I, when I got the job with Fred Rogers, and help make the program i i felt i never worked a day in my life it was it was hard work but i loved every moment of it mm -hmm. and that's my point is when anybody picks any career or job pick one you like because you won't feel like you're working you'll be loving what you're doing and that's a that's good advice when you're thinking about a career make sure you do something you really love because you won't work a day in your life then yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything that you treasure most? It's here somewhere. There. This is cool. <laughs> it's my speedy delivery hat. I keep it here in my office. I, I wore this for years and years on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, and I keep it right by my desk here to remind me of uh, my years in the neighborhood. It says speedy delivery, and it's one of my favorites because it really, I look more like McFeely now with a hat on, don't I? Yeah. Uh, and uh, these glasses are sort of like McFeely's glasses. Then I had a mustache. And let me see, I'll show you something. I looked like this. That's how I looked when I was on television. And there are the glasses that are similar to what I have on now and, and speedy delivery. And I always wore a bow tie. But you know, I also have one of Mr. Rogers' sweaters that I keep. Um, and you can't see it here, but I have it hanging on the wall. My son, for my son, who's I guess 35 now, for my birthday one year, he took the sweater from where I had it hanging in our, our closet and had to put it into a frame. And now it's Mr. Rogers' sweater, one of them, not all of them, just one of them, mm -hmm. is framed and I have it hanging on my wall to remind me of the wonderful time I had uh, working on the program. And this too. <laughs> is there an episode that is most memorable to you? Yes. Well, they all are really, but you know the movie Wizard of Oz? Yes. Well. In that movie, there was a very scary witch. Remember the witch and the flying monkeys? And it always scared people. In fact, back, oh, 20, 30 years ago, somebody once told me, oh, I don't like to watch that movie, even as an adult, because that witch scared me. I was so scared of the witch when I was little, and I am still scared of the witch as an adult. So I said to Fred Rogers, you know, Mr. Rogers, why don't we do this? Why don't you write a story 
about an actress who played a witch. So we got a hold of the woman who played the witch. Her name is Margaret, Mc Margaret Hamilton, Margaret Hamilton. And to make a long story short, we got a hold of her. She came on the program and talked about her part of playing the witch. And it helped very young children to realize that it was just pretend. You know, she was pretending to be a scary witch, but she's, she wasn't, she's an actress. And she explained that she, that was her job, to, be, to pretend she's different people in plays and movies and television programs. Yeah. And, and so that was a memorable program because she was a lovely person. She wasn't at all scary like the witch in the movie. She yeah. was, in fact, she was, before she got to be an actress, she was a kindergarten teacher. Wow. <laughs> so she knew a lot about children and she knew the characters she played scared young children. Now, you know, you're older now and you realize that it's an actress in that part, but a very young children, two, three, four, they don't separate fantasy and reality. They think it's all lumped together. You know, they don't know when something is real and something is pretend. And that's what Fred Rogers was doing for that age group, was telling them, helping them deal with everyday life and saying that's pretend and this is real. You know, that's why he came into the program and changed his, into a sweater. That was the real reality part of the program. That was every day. Then he would, the trolley would come in and he would say, let's pretend we're going to the neighborhood of make-believe where anything could happen. You know, that's where all the fantasy could happen. And then he brought the kids back at the end of the program to reality. So it was, every, every program was a lesson in separating fantasy and reality for very young children. And that was my most memorable program, I think. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I have to watch that episode. It seems such a cool episode. Yeah, well, I'm going to take my hat off now because I think I've made my point. Definitely. I definitely, I'm so excited to watch it. And do you think the themes and lessons that were addressed in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood still apply to kids today? I do. I do. You know, things might change. The outsides of kids may change. There may be hairstyles or clothing styles that are different that changes but the inside of children don't change you learn to walk and talk at the same basically the same age and you have the same concerns as you're growing and i don't think they change at all that's what remains constant and constant and that's what Mr. Rogers addresses on his program. Because in child development, you grow at a specific rate. And when you're three, you might not understand that the wicked witches just pretend, but yeah. when you're 13, you do, and that's developmental. Yeah. So, so he addressed what young children don't understand. And I still think they apply today. When, when children three and four watch the program today, they still mean as, as much as they did when they were originally shown. Mm -hmm. So he's dealt with a lot of subjects over the years. You know, I don't know if you felt this way. And that's not to say that every child is afraid of the same thing or concerned about the same thing. But we did a whole week on going to school for the first time. Now, this, this, that might not directly uh, uh, be the same right this year because not everybody's going back to school, but we'll be going back to regular school and everybody who's starting school for the very first time can be a little apprehensive, a little scared about new, meeting new people. What's going to happen? I'll miss my family. All of that. Now, you might not think of that when you're grown up, but a three, four, and five-year-old going to preschool and kindergarten and first grade, that's a very big change in their daily routine. And we did a whole week about that. And we did a whole week about superheroes. Sometimes 
uh, superheroes scare young children. And did you ever hear the program called The Incredible Hulk? Yes, I, that's actually my dad's favorite episode, The Incredible is it? <laughs> Well, when my daughter was three years old, she saw that by mistake on television. She had turned the TV on and there was The Incredible Hulk and it really scared her. It, she had nightmares. And so I said, I told Fred Rogers, he said, well, I think we could make a program about that and just put it in perspective for, for people. So we went to the studio where they, make, where they made Incredible Hulk and watched them film it. Yeah. And, we, and we watched the Hulk getting into his green makeup and all of that. And that helped a lot of young children who knew that was an actor, you know, before it was just very scary. But uh, that could be very helpful to to show children things like that. And we've done so many different themes like that, going to the doctor for the first time, school for the first time. Uh, we did a whole week on work, uh, how important it is to work and, 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 and by choosing something you love. Many, many different things that, uh, oh, and we did one, on the death of a goldfish, explaining explaining to children the cycle of life. And one day he found a goldfish in his tank, the aquarium that he has on the set, and he decided to do a whole program about the subject. And he showed children and talked about it. And then he told the story about when he was little, probably around your age. No, he's a little younger than you. His dog died. Her name was Mitzi, and he was very sad. And he talked about that, using that as an example yeah. for young children. And then taking the goldfish that he found in the aquarium, and he, sh he went outside and, and buried the fish. And that was a way, in some ways, to explain to, to young children he told them as much as they needed to know at the time he didn't they didn't have to go into a lot of the detail but i think it was the emotion how he missed his dog and how he would miss that fish that he was trying to because when people leave they go out of your life you're very sad and that's a very natural emotion and that's i think what he wanted to get across to young children so all the programs we've done over the years have had a purpose, a lesson in some way in them. I recently interviewed Daniel Krell, who plays you. Mr. Oh, that's right. They told me. Oh, okay. Now, have you seen that movie yet? Yeah, yeah. You have. Uh, I, I remember being there when they filmed it. Wow. And... You know where they filmed it? In the same studio, not all of it, but a lot of it in the same studio where we made Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Really? And it was done in Pittsburgh. A lot of it was shot in Pittsburgh. And there's a, see, there's a picture of me. Did you see me in it? Not Mr. McFeely. If you look again, you'll see me. There's a scene where Tom Hanks and Matthew Rees are talking in a restaurant. And Tom Hanks says to Matthew, Tom Hanks was supposed to be Mr. Rogers at that point. That's the actor's name who played yeah. Mr. Rogers. And Matthew Reese was the actor who played the author. And Tom Hanks said, just take a moment and think of the people who helped you as you were growing. Remember that? Yeah. And then the camera went around the room. And if yeah. you watch, You'll see me and you'll see Mrs. Rogers too. She's in the scene too. So watch it again. And when that scene comes up, watch carefully because it goes, that was my little cameo. But the person who played me, yes, his name is Daniel Krell. And he played the McFeely part. Yes. Were you wearing like in the little cameo that you have, were you wearing like speedy delivery hat? No, I was just like this. Okay. I was. I think I had a suit jacket on, but uh, I didn't have my. I didn't have the uh, costume on. No, you wouldn't have known that it was uh, Mr. McFeely sitting there. You'd have to know it was me. <laughs> I definitely will go back and watch it. That's so. And, 
and you can you can you can tell your audience and, and the real Mr. McFeely has a cameo in it and you can <laughs> tell them where it is. <laughs> yes, definitely. And do you have any favorite movies or TV shows? Oh, there are so many movies. That's one of my favorite pastimes is watching. You know what I like to watch? I like musicals. They uh, and, and one of my favorite musicals, it's it's old now but it's uh is, is the music man did you ever see that movie called the music man yes i saw a little bit of it i think yeah yeah se 76 trombones is from yeah. that and it's about a man teaching the children of the town music that's b yeah. the basic story and yeah. i like that and i like i don't know if you've ever heard of a comedy team called Laurel and Hardy. Have you ever heard of that? Your, that? your mom probably has. They were very famous back in the 1930s, even before I was born. Yeah. But their movies are still shown. They made a lot of movies in black and white. And they're called, their name of the team is Laurel and Hardy. And I think they're very funny. And I like I like them and I belong to their fan club, even though they've died many years ago. Uh, they're still very funny and one of my favorite things to watch. I always watch that, but I like musicals and I like comedies, but I like, I like good, any movie that's good and done with respect and done with some sort of integrity and a message to it. I like that kind of a, a drama or a, a movie with a message. What is your favorite movie? Ooh, that's pretty hard. I mean... I know it's not easy to answer that, yeah. is it? Um, do, you have, do you have one that stands out? Do you, a cartoon or is it live action? I really like The Simpsons, especially The uh -huh. Simpsons. Oh, they're funny, The yeah. Simpsons. And, and do you get all the humor? Because a lot of the humor in there is for almost for adults in a way. Yes, There's a I lot. Most of it. I think I laugh every once in a while. <laughs> Another, can you think of any other program you like or a um, movie? I really um, was in love and, um, and I still am with Star Wars. Oh, okay. You like oh, Star Wars. I, and you've, you've seen them all? All yes. the Star Wars? Yes, I've seen them too. In fact, I remember taking my my children to see them. Did you ever see a movie called uh, Back to the Future? I love that movie. Yeah, yeah, I thought you would. I like that movie too. Yeah. And I remember taking, and there's another one that I took my children to that they like. Now I'm, oh, E.T. Yes. You like E.T.? Yeah, they like that, too. They, they, they really liked E.T., and that's a, a favorite. But I've got so many over the years. Some of them you won't even know the names of because they were made before even I was born. <laughs> <laughs> what was your favorite puppet, uh, Mr. Rogers? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I think it's King Friday. I like King Friday because he, he is so pompous. Pom you know what pompous means? He thinks he's so important. And then Lady Elaine comes along and causes him, you know, and, and takes him off his, his high stool. He, he, <laughs> she brings him down to his level. But, you know, all of those puppets are created. Each puppet has a facet, a, a part of a child's first personality. You know, Daniel Tiger is very shy, and some children are. And Lady Elaine gets into a lot of mischief, and some children do. King Friday is sort of an author authoritarian figure, meaning he's like a principal. Or uh, yeah. and so they all deal in. And X the Owl is very studious. He likes to learn. So all of those puppets have a different facet. And Fred Rogers will use the puppet to fit the script that he's written. But I think King Friday, because he says a lot of funny things. And then somebody comes along and says, oh, Friday, you, you don't know what you're talking about, or yeah. something like that, and brings him down to his level, puts him in his place. And do you think that there is any programming that is new today and has similar goals that Mr. Rogers has? Oh, so many, but, but I think 
the program closest to Mr. Rogers probably is Sesame Street that has a lot of good uh, advice for parents and emotional support for very young children. It deals with topics that that age child can benefit by. Including, so I think. Yeah, Daniel's neighborhood, right? And oh, yes, yes, yeah, I'm, yes, that's the program. That's what I should have answered first. Daniel, of course, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood. That is probably the closest program to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Oh, and the Fred Rogers Production Company is currently producing another spinoff. That means another program influenced by Mr. Rogers that stars Don Quixote, who's on the program. That's a puppet. It's a donkey puppet. And Purple Panda which is another character of Mr. Rogers, and that will be puppets, not animation, but it'll be puppets like, something like a combination of the Sesame puppets and the Mr. Rogers puppets. Mm -hmm. And that will come out, oh, probably about a year from now. Wow, that's so yeah, But they're working on it now, but it will have characters from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood in that series too. So then there'll be two uh programs influenced by Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, and this new show, which they haven't titled yet, but featuring characters from the program. And of course, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood will be around, and so will the documentaries. Have you seen the documentaries that were made on Mr. Rogers, too? There's, there's... I've seen a little bit of the newest one, but I haven't seen all of it, I don't think. Yeah, it's... Uh... I think that's called, well, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood is the Tom Hanks movie, right? The other one is uh, Won't You Be My Neighbor, I believe. Yeah. And that's a uh, documentary. I recommend that. If you really want to know a lot about the subjects on the program and why he has picked some of those, that's a good documentary to, to watch. And do you know who the actor Michael Keaton is? Michael Keaton, a lot of your viewers may not know, began his career on the floor crew of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah. And his name at that time, his real name then was Michael Douglas. That was his real name. Yeah. And, he ch and he changed it to Michael Keaton, and he's made a lot of movies. He's a very good actor. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. You had so many amazing things to say. Well, you're such a good interviewer, too. I'm, I, what would you like to do when you, when you get out of college? What would you, do you, have you thought? Yes, I am actually doing like some auditions and stuff now, and I really want to be an actress when I grow up. Oh, well, good for you. I think you would make a good actress because you seem very comfortable talking on the screen. Uh, you seem very comfortable with the camera and that's such an important, important uh, talent to have, you know. Now, do you think you would study that in college, studying uh, theater and acting? Is that something you think you would study? Definitely, if I could, I would definitely try to study it. Oh, I, I think if you want to be, you, you should. And my point being is, Whatever you choose as a career, be prepared, study for it. You know, there's a lot of theory that goes into acting and you can do acting classes and work on your voice and work on your, your comfortable being on stage. A lot of those exercises are very practical, but, the, but just doing it and getting the experience, it's a tough, a tough business. And anybody who wants to go into it, you know, you can't take it personally either. If you don't pass an audition, it's not something personal. It's just that you may not be right for that part. And they take somebody else. But they're not doing anything personally to you. It's just that they, somebody else will fit the description better. Yeah. So it's, it takes a lot of inner courage to do that, too. It's, you can't take it all personally. So when you go into acting it's a very very tough job it it, it uh, but i think it's very rewarding too so that's my little bit of advice <laughs> Thank you so much it was so great talking to you
Well, thank you. And if you ever want to do a part two, you just let me know. Definitely. Okay. Okay. Are you signing off now? I think so. Okay. Well, here's how we're going to sign off. I'm going to count to three and we'll both say speedy delivery and then it can end. All right. Okay. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. Speedy delivery. Bye-bye, everybody. Speedy Bye. delivery. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Mr. Newell. It was such a privilege to talk to you. Well, all right, guys. See you next time on Search It Up with Sienna.